Hello, Saint. You are now listening to the teaching sermon from the God Life Assembly Just by Pastor Chintok Ishako. Remain blessed as you listen. Hey Amen. If you are not in church, you have some catching up to do. On Tuesday, I can't go through all the scriptures. Today, I will just focus on one of them as a quick recap because I know that our time is fast spent. So I'll continue what I started on Tuesday, on Tuesday. But today, for the sake of those of you who are not here, we started a few scriptures across the Old Testament. We read Isaiah 40, Hosea chapter 6, Jeremiah 30. Which other scripture did we read? Huh? Zechariah chapter 10. We read all of those scriptures and there was a consistent pattern that we saw. Listen to this and it was my attempt to bring understanding to the subject, refresh, restart, he restores my soul. The Lord has begun to deal with me about the restoration of the soul and I can't wait to get there. I mean, I can't wait in this teaching to get there. They are not necessarily new things, but they are things that are deeply exciting. For instance, you will understand the reason why Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. But listen, before we get there, we established out of Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, for instance, started with saying, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Tell her that her warfare is ended and her iniquity is pardoned. Said, For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, when you read all of the scriptures in context, Hosea chapter 6, come now, let us return to the Lord, verse 2. For he has struck us, but he will heal us. He has broken us, he will bind us up. Then he said, On the second day, he will raise us up. Uh, on the second day, he will restore us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. And we will live in his sight. Then the Bible said, Then shall you know, if you go on to know the Lord, that his ways are set like the rising of the sun, and he will come to us. He will come like the former and the latter rain. Now, I took the time on Tuesday to establish that there were, that the context of saying that the Lord has broken us comes from three things number one was iniquity if a people lived in sin what happened was that the consequence of their sin became a burden upon them and at that point it is not God who is inflicting upon them even though you can attribute it to God at that point everything you attribute to God is attributed to his principles and I took the time to explain, please listen to me very carefully. I took the time to explain that he takes responsibility because he's the one who set the principle in place. Not because he's the one who is responsible for the pain you are going through. So that we said on Tuesday that when God spoke to man in the Garden of Eden, hear this very carefully, God didn't say in the day you eat it, I will kill you. God said in the day you eat it, you will surely die. That means like vegetables give you vitamins, like fruits give you vitamins, like meat gives you protein. This fruit buts in you death. And I'm going to come back to it when I start to speak about he restores my soul. Listen to this. Because what the Bible called that tree or what God called that tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That means that there's a knowledge, a kind of thinking, a pattern of thought. Once it comes alive inside of you, you are on your way to death. That means in God's agenda for man to live forever is not supposed to be a supernatural blessing. It's supposed to be a natural way of living. Let me give you a foretest of he restores my soul so that you can understand it. That means that in God's original context, if you slept in the night and you woke up, you were supposed to wake up totally renewed. That means yesterday should not be counted. So you have age to the degree to which rest does not restore. You are aging to the degree to which rest is not restoring. And one of the things that will cause rest to restore is going to rest with nothing in your heart apart from God. That's the reason why if you study scriptures, you'll find out that offenses cut short your life. Let me say it to you the way Peter said it. Who is he? Who loves life and will see good days? 
Let him keep his tongue, his lips from evil and his tongue from speaking guile. That means if a man can keep his lips from evil and his tongue from speaking guile, listen to this, he will love life and he will see good days. It elongates your life. But it makes that your life is not filled with sorrow. But you see the problem is that the two things he mentioned are connected to a root which is called the heart. So Psalm 19 says, keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Listen to this very carefully. That means those sins, that trouble that sits in your heart, that unforgiveness, that grudge, that pain, that in its operation is designed to have dominion. That means you don't want to want it for it to control you. Dominion means you don't want to want it for it to control you. It exerts upon you and you feel like it's captive. So that many times even if you wanted to feel differently, you cannot feel differently. But I bring you good news. Even the lawful captives will be delivered. And the prey of the mighty will be set free. Some of those satanic systems are mighty they are mighty an offense can take your heart and six years later after you said lord i forgive every time the offense rises it comes with the dominion of presumptuous sins and the bible calls them presumptuous sins because they are positions that you can never ascertain I already have entered, he restores my soul. Let me give you the the foremost one so that we can go home. I have the whole month to explain the thing. And listen to this. We're not just going to be explaining it. At the release of the word of God will come power for you to live above the things that you have been a slave under in the name of Jesus. You will take back the dominion for your life. To the degree to which the day you say, I forgive, the pain of it will not have dominion on you. Yeah. That you will arrive at the place where you don't require explanation to let go of the things that are destroying you and cutting short your life. Yeah. You need to understand, it's a dominion system. That was what God said to Cain. He said, why are you wrath? If you had done right, won't tell you have been accepted? That means this thing you are angry about was not a matter of I chose Abel and I rejected you. It was a matter of both of you will have been able to live right and be accepted before God. He said, but if not, God didn't say you have sinned. From his anger, he said, sin is knocking at your door. That means one of the doorposts of sin in a man's life is anger. In fact, let me say it like this. Any emotion you are not responsible for rising in your heart is a door of entrance for Satan or God. Fali, I was not dreaming about you. I'm married to Jonas Sandys. I love my wife for but I just saw you. And suddenly, I just know that this baby is fine. I did not sit down and say, is this baby fine? Let me think about this baby so that I can see whether she's fine. She just passed and there was a, a way her butt did. I know you don't have too many preachers that tell you these things. But when you face them every day, you're not too ashamed to follow the thoughts. So we cannot be too ashamed to tell you what you thought. Hmm. She just passed. There was a way her bot did. And the moment the bot did like that, thoughts rose from your heart unsolicited. You did not invite the thought. There was no conversation between you and hell. In the realm of the spirit, God is the only gentleman. That's why he's the one who recommends that you can test all spirits. Because he will not lay dominion over you. 
until you say what we said today. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. He's longing to make you his vessel, but he will not make you his vessel until you say, make me a vessel. Jesus is the only gentleman in that realm. In that realm, Satan, who the Bible calls a thief, who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says, if the watchman knew at what hour the thief cometh, then he wouldn't have slept. That means that, that Satan requires a suspension of your consciousness about a stature that you have in God. And the moment he sees that you have suspended that consciousness, he knocks that door. Do you get it? But like I said, one of the doorways Satan uses to enter is anger. That means at the point when those emotions overwhelm you, listen to this, that's why you cannot play with fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Let these things not just be songs you sing. It should not be songs we sold to the world. We should sing them until it becomes our reality. And I remember that I was teaching the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and I said, you don't understand fellowship with the Holy Spirit if when you go to the Holy Spirit, the only thing you talk about is God and the beauty of heaven and the gloriousness of divine ascensions and how you desire to see the glory of God. You don't know the Holy Ghost. If you know the Holy Ghost, you will know. He's the first person you should tell the rubbish you are thinking. His Holy Ghostness is not to judge your unholy Pessiness. I remember that I was teaching the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and I showed that in the beginning of time when darkness covered the face of the deep, the only one who can comfortably sit in darkness is the Spirit of the Lord. So the Holy Ghost has no problem that you feel like sleeping with somebody. He has a problem with you not letting him hover upon the face of that deep. So our registration in mind of the holiness of God makes that we think that only holy conversations should happen with the Holy God. And then suddenly, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry good, good things. have a problem talking to God and thanks him. Father, I thank you for this victory you have won. You even want to thank him for the sin you overcame. As if it's you that overcame it. Does anybody understand what I just said? You want to be able to get up and say to God, Lord, I'm thinking a thought. I am feeling a feeling. I know it does not glorify you, but this is having dominion over me. Lord, who can stand against the law? No one can. No one will. And at that point, you're not talking about enemies in your village. You're talking about the force within. Who can stand against the law? No one can. No one will. Then shout at it. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to you. Shout it again. Oh, 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 oh. The victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. I dare you. Try it and see if Satan does not flee. Let me tell you one of the places where Satan thrives in people's lives. He makes you feel like a slave. To what you feel. And he also makes you feel like you and the feeling are one and the same. And the moment you take responsibility for the feeling, you don't identify where the feeling is coming from. So he sits on the side sipping tea, adding the intensity of how you feel. And while you are doing, thinking, why am I struggling? No, why am I struggling? Who, who is this devil? Get tea behind me. Don't ever get up and ask, why am I feeling like to sleep with a girl? No, it's not your feeling. 
somebody, some strange spirit somewhere is trying to marry your humanity with sin. And one of the things that Jesus did was that he cut to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Satan will not make me take responsibility for a feeling that is cooked in hell. When you become conscious that there's an evil spirit attached to making you accept as yours thinkings and feelings that were cooked in hell to create an open door for iniquity to have dominion over you. Listen, at that point, you have caught the thief. Listen, let me tell you how it will be happening. It will be that you are standing here. Somebody try to creep up, try to creep up. Now, look at this, look at this. No, creep, 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 creep. It means you are going all the way down. Now, if you are creeping, you are trying to make sure that from where I'm standing, I cannot see your head. That's how Satan comes in. Jesus said, I am the door. I am not only the door, I always come through the door. Then he said, anybody who comes through by the window is a thief and a robber. So what I do for you, for you to identify, is that I bring you into the fellowship of the spirit so that you become acquainted with my voice. Because my sheep, they know my voice. If you don't know my voice, the voice of the creeping thief will sound like my voice. this carefully so it's like satan is creeping there creep again then while he's creeping there say, satan i saw you i know you listen the moment satan is identified he flees listen to this there is no conditionality for the fleeing of satan the only condition is submit yourself then to god there's no condition you tell Satan, get away, and he will not go. If you ever say to Satan, get away, and he does not go, you are not submitted to God. Maybe the only other exception will be that if he has collected right from God to try you. And oh, we said some beautiful things on Tuesday. God does not permit Satan to try you so that he can promote you. God has promoted you and he declared the promotion in the spirit then Satan contests the promotion then God permits Satan to try what he already knows ah. that means as far as heaven is concerned no Christian should ever fail a trial because the trial didn't come to confirm to, to try whether you are strong. The trial came to confirm what God has already known concerning you. Do you understand why First Corinthians chapter 10 will say, No temptation has seized you except that which is common to man. And God is faithful. Who will not let you be tempted beyond that which you are able? First statement is generic. That's your generic consolation. There's no child Satan is sending to me that I'm the first to be tried with. It's common to man. And everything that becomes common can be commonly handled. Uh, Satan, I've seen you. I saw when you were doing it in Raymond's life. I also saw when you were doing it in Francis' life. I saw what you are doing. You, I, I know it's you. It's common to man. But the second one is specific to you. And the specification to you is bound to the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Who will not let you be tempted beyond that which you are able? That means though it is a generic trial, before Satan lets, before God lets Satan try you, he checks you. He saw that, oh, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Huh? John Sandy. Come on, come on. Do I have a Christian who understands this? If you understand it, it means that 
the moment persecutions come you begin to rejoice because sometimes you don't hear the announcement of your promotion ah are you hearing me sometimes you were not there when god said to satan have you considered my servant job there is none like him no one else can keep my word like he does that's god's boasting god is saying there's an authority you have entered into you were not in the conversation the first place the conversation started for job was that he was inspecting as normal then he saw his servant running then he turned around and another servant was coming from afar then while this one arrived he said this thing came down then he turned this one arrived at the heels of him and said this other thing came down listen Ooh. now you understand that it is this knowledge that makes that the demand of scriptures are not grievous every understanding reduces the grievousness of the commandments of God every understanding increases your understanding of what God meant when he said rejoicing in tribulation that means every tribulation that approaches you is a sign that God has just finished boasting about you you did not attend the meeting but the sign that the boast has been done is that a series of trials are released so trials is not God checking whether you will pass trials is that God knows that you have passed so he permitted Satan to confirm it it's not God who confirms that you are worthy of the it's that he knows that's why you don't war to victory you war from victory are you, are you following hmm? I started seeing some people post online 2024 I ended well I like it because that's how faith speaks faith declares the end of a matter from the beginning knowing that the God who has spoken to me concerning this year is not waiting for me to try to make it come to pass he has already equipped me with everything that there is I can't send you to the market evangelist I cannot send you to the market give you a list that is 1.4 million and credit your account with 2.4 million you are going to the market as though you are going to be tried let me go to the market and test my faith that's how believers face life that's why we are defeated by life the way you approach tells that thief that you don't know the equipping you have so he will spoil you hey. Satan will make you know spoiling you know, you know how they spoil don't let anyone spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. my example every time oh I wish somebody can borrow me a hundred dollars my example every time is a hundred dollars and a hundred naira uh, Pastor, you, you call a child now and give him a hundred dollars and he collects it and he's rejoicing then the way you see him playing and where you saw him drop the hundred dollars you know that this child does not know the value but you also know that the child has a sense of possession enough to cry if you carry that money so what do you do junior junior see this one give me that one i'll give you this one see this one it's not even fine it's just ash see this hundred and a half very fine red it has a more attractive color but does not have value cbn staff forgive me yet it does not have value yet thank you Ilya. are you following me then he said to the child and look see 100 this one too 100 then you collect the two and hold it i say which one do you want by color by brightness and by 100 by size hey thank you sir don't understand it if i even size 
The hundred naira looks big. The hundred dollars looks very humble. They made it that small so that it can enter your wallet and not make noise. Ooh. So ask customs people and immigration when we are leaving the country. They, you are going like this, free like this. You are not carrying anything. They call, come, how much do you have there? You know why they ask you how much you have there? Because you can squeeze like a hundred thousand US dollars on your body. And you are looking very innocent. And they know what a hundred thousand US dollars can do. You, they know that you have, you have shifted an economy from one nation to another. So they tell you, no, you are only permitted to carry 5,000 US dollars cash. So the dollar is created small. So you can just create one pocket here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Arrange them 20, 20. Your pocket will not budge. You're all right. Some valuable things don't make noise. It doesn't depreciate the quality of what they can buy in the market. I wish you heard it concerning divine things. Now when Satan sees that you are worrying like one who is looking for victory, he knows that you don't know the quality of what you carry. So he brings a philosophy, a thought, a manner of thinking. He introduces that philosophy with a singular intent to make you disbelieve the quality of what you carry. And exchange it for a philosophical thought. Listen, this sounds small, but wait with me. Let's get to he restores my soul. You will yield to the thoughts of God with joy when you understand what it means for him to restore your soul. You will now realize how many times you obstructed the blessing of God by contributing your thinking. Let's hear this, and I'll begin to. So when Satan creeps, please creep again, sir. I'm not punishing you. You're somebody's husband and somebody's father. When Satan creeps and say, Hey, Satan, I know this is you. The moment you identify Satan, all of his weapons drop. Because he requires deception to operate. And the problem is that Satan is watching you take responsibility for what he's introducing to your life. He said, this is my anger. This is my lust. This is my... Oh! The Bible says that you are recreated after the image of him that created you. Oh! Oh! That means presently you look like God. It's your soul that is waiting to conform to that thinking so that you can start to operate like what you look like. Listen down, sir. So listen to this. We agreed that there were three things that cause pain. Number one was iniquity. Number six was trial number three was the thief and even though I did not list it all the examples I've made has laid it out clearly for you listen iniquity ends the moment repentance happens the end of the reign of iniquity is repentance and repentance is not asking for forgiveness repentance is changing the way you think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think on the cross of one night, I took the time to explain the difference between forgiveness and repentance. Right? If I said, listen to this, let me show you an example. I'm trying to make this. If I say, Grace! Grace is a useless mother. I might even have a basis to say it. Is that not how that day I was going and I just saw Zohar? If you see the way Zohar was looking, she looked like something they squeezed from gutter. Grace is a very useless mother. Listen. If Grace gets to hear that I said she's a useless mother and she becomes angry, I can go and ask her to forgive me 
without changing my mind on the uselessness do you understand it you are still a useless mother but so that peace I don't like it that you are not talking to me. Do you understand? I don't, I don't like it. It will not look like we are keeping malice in the choir. So, Grace, forgive me. Listen, that's not repentance. Repentance happens and God does not require that anybody asks for forgiveness who has not repented. That's why there are more Christians asking for forgiveness than there are Christians repenting. Ooh, this one will enter you, to enter you. So many times, when Christians come to God in the night to say, Lord, every sin we have committed, whether sin of omission or commission, listen, there's nothing like sin of omission or commission. Because if it's sin and your conscience is alive, you will know at the point of sin that sin is sin. Right? The reason why we learned to pray whether the sin of omission or commission in the night is just in case the trumpet sound. And Jesus come, and we use, and the trumpets come, and we use. Now you know which generation I come from. The idea is, God, don't hold this against us, and use it as the, as the reason why you deny us your kingdom. But it does not mean, oh God. That if I have the same situation, I will act differently. And repentance has not happened until every situation provokes a new action. Listen, repentance can happen by experience. What I mean by that? Then say, we tell you, say, Jesus said, leave this sexual sin matter until you marry. You see this sex matter. Leave it. Marry. In fact, the Bible recommends that if your body is scratching you, run to us quick. Do you understand it? Come to Pastor A's office. Don't come to my own. Come to Pastor A's office and knock. Crack, 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 crack. If they say he's sleeping, use two of your hands. Bah, 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 bah. When comes out, watch this. Say, 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 fire. Fire. They say, which house? He said, no, no, pastor, look at me, fire. And that fire, I need to quench it now. So I came with her, she's downstairs. We want you to join us quick, quick. We will send your parents a text quickly. I said it was an emergency. As your sense is worrying you. The Bible says if a young man is behaving himself or similarly towards a virgin to whom he is espoused to be married, they should go ahead quickly and marry. They do not sin. It's better for them to marry than to burn with lust. So if the thing is worrying you, and that's the only problem in the world. to our office we will join you and send a text to your parents we'll tell them you will pay them up front <laughs> but do you understand what i'm saying here if lost is your problem marry if they say marry you say no you want to be just chinabati I didn't mean that. I... Those are some words you should avoid this week in Plateau State. No, if you don't understand me, just leave it. You just want to chin a body. Listen, and chin a body. Oh, I said I should avoid it, right? Oh, some of you are not from the north, so you don't understand Chinabati. 
some things are only sweet in a particular language. For instance, how do you say Chinabati is eat for free? I mean, you see, Awuf. Every Nigerian should know Awuf. If you don't know Awuf, welcome back to the land of your birth. Listen. When you start to live like that, did you notice that what man focuses on is he focuses on erasing the consequences of his action rather than changing the way he thinks. So if it's pregnancy, we'll use protection. If protection bursts, we will kill the child. It's not abortion, it's murder. You understand? Because you didn't initiate the process by which life begins. You don't have the right to take it. And if by your irresponsibility you provided a vessel for life to begin, honor the altar of life and leave that life to try. Except that because you didn't build life according to the seasons and the times of life, you cannot avoid the bitterness that comes with it. You know why? Because the pregnancy is not the only implication. The ability to gather your soul is also an implication. So you find out that you have a hard time with faithfulness in marriage because your soul has known to take pleasure wherever it finds it. And the problem with that is that you have given birth to children too. There are two dimensions to that problem. You have given them the seed of who you were at the point you transferred but the second problem is that they are going to rise up around the culture of their mother crying because some girl took the attention of their father. And you broke that child tomorrow by your unfaithfulness today. There is no, listen, there's no wisdom created on the earth that ever beats the wisdom of God. Every sin still has a consequence. following the end of iniquity is repentance the end of a trial is victory the end of the thief is realization but we agreed on tuesday let me say this and round this off and you go home when we come on tuesday i'll take up isaiah chapter 30 and i'll show you what it takes for a generation to convert what used to be sorrow into what becomes joy but we agreed on Tuesday and I'm going to call you to the altar in a moment we agreed on Tuesday that whichever of these three you come from your soul comes out weary comes out tired that listen to this that the trial was sanctioned by God does not mean that your soul will be alright when you are done when the consequences of iniquity take their place and i remember that on tuesday we agreed that unfortunately the consequence of iniquity does not always only take its course in the life of the sinner that's what ezekiel captured when he said no no it wasn't ezekiel who captured it a prophet captured that before ezekiel the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set at edge if you study life carefully you will find out that you are not the only benefactor of the consequence of your mistake. God somehow found a way to make us responsible for each other. Listen to this. And so that's why Ezekiel said, no longer shall this proverb be used in Israel. That the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set at age. But in that day, sin will be isolated so that the soul that sins, that soul alone shall die. And so we agree that whether it is iniquity, a trial, or the thief, what happens is that when it is done, your soul is scarred. You are tired. And we agree that when your soul arrives at that place, you must reach out to the God who refreshes. Because it, there's never a restart without a refreshing.
listen to this if you restart without being refreshed you will recreate the chaos you are coming from and i said again even if you realize that you were wrong in the case of iniquity listen don't attempt to start again return to god one of the songs we sang on tuesday cast me not away from your presence oh lord take not your holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me refreshing is the process of that renewal of a right spirit cast me not away from your presence oh lord take not your holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew right spirit within me let me close with the writer of that song was david and this was why david chose this was why god chose david over saul saul sinned when the prophet samuel revealed his sin to him saul was more concerned about how people saw him than he was concerned about the process of brokenness within or the process of iniquity within that has brought him to the place where he no longer honors God. And so he held the garment of the prophet Samuel and Samuel turned and the garment tore. And Samuel said, so is the kingdom torn away from you and given to another. David, by the same process of iniquity, if you read about the mighty men of David in St. Chronicles, you find that the one of the ones that was clearly stated is Uriah the Hittite. And every time I shared that story, I told you that the reason why David could stand upon his roof and look down and see the house of Uriah and his wife naked was because the generals of David built their houses around David declaring that to penetrate and touch the anointed of the Lord you have to kill us first and the betrayal of Uriah was a high sin and David had in the strength of his soul consistently thought ahead of his sin and tried to create a cover up for it and Nathan came by the spirit of the Lord and said to David there's a matter in Israel that has been brought to me and I'm looking for your counsel as king there is a man he had many sheep and this other man had one sheep and because his sheep was one he tended it carefully and it, blo it, it bloomed beautifully and then this man who had many sheep turned around and insisted that he must have that one sheep and he swindled the man and took the one sheep and decided that he must kill the man. And by the time the prophet Nathan was revealing the nature of the sin of David to him, David was already, the righteousness of David was already getting angry. Let's kill the man. Listen to this. Listen to this. That's how powerful deception is. It can be sitting and walking within you without obstructing your feeling of righteousness. The moment David saw that he was the man, he took that entire thing Sam, uh, Nathan illustrated and crushed the righteousness he felt instantly. He fell before God. He wasn't saying, Lord, please let Israel not hear this sin. He wasn't saying, Lord, please cover me up. You know I'm your servant. He saw his wretchedness. And said, create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Then he
said, cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He was listing the things that were precious to him. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. And renew thy spirit. When he was saying restore to me, he was saying, Oh, no wonder I've been living in so much pain. Cast me not away from your presence, oh Lord. Take not your spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Joy your salvation, the joy of my salvation, and renew, Lord, and renew my spirit within me. Say one more time, and we open the altar. Cast me not away, cast me not away from your presence, oh Lord. Take not your spirit from me, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Say, restore to me, restore to me the joy of salvation, the joy of my salvation, and renew, and renew thy spirit within me. Listen to me today. You are in church, you know that you are in a struggle. All you know that you have come out of that struggle, but your soul is tired. It's refreshing at this altar. It's refreshing here. Yeah. Wherever you are, just rise from your seat and come here and let's minister to you. my yoke is easy my burden is light it is never supposed to feel so heavy whether it's iniquity whether it is a trial whether it is satan who is stealing from you you identify my soul is tired because to be wrong to restart if you don't refresh Restore to me. We we'll sing that two more times. Joy of salvation and renew. Say it at the altar. Cast me not away. Cast me not away from your presence. From your presence, oh Lord. Take not your spirit from me. Restore to me, restore to me the joy of salvation, the joy of my salvation, Say and renew and renew my spirit. Especially if you are in front, pray one more time, and the power of God will meet you there. Cast me not away, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Say restore to me. Restore to me. The joy of salvation. The joy of my salvation. And renew, yeah. And renew my spirit within me. Please renew a right spirit. So I 
I don't live according to the hurt, according to the pain. And renew right spirit within me. So I don't go on with self-help and my schemes. Lord, renew right spirit within me. And just lift up your hands where you are father by your promise of rain we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus refresh your sons and daughters as they stand in your presence Lord every iniquity by this repentance forgive and refresh every trial by this identification the bible says and when satan was done the angel of the lord strengthened the lord jesus everyone who is coming from a season of trial right now i release the angel of the lord's presence to minister to your refreshing in the name of the lord jesus everyone who is coming from a season where the thief stole from you the Bible says if a thief be caught, even if he stole for hunger, he will restore sevenfold. I decree now in the name of Jesus, let your consolation come by restorations. Let it come by restorations. Let it come by restorations. Let the same angel of the presence of the Lord freshen you. Heal the places where that which was stolen from you broke. And we command the body of new life thank you father for your refreshing my soul belongs my soul belongs my soul my soul belongs to the Lord my soul belongs my soul belongs my soul, my soul belongs to the Lord. Confess it three times. My soul belongs, my soul belongs, my soul belongs, my soul belongs, my soul, my soul, my soul. He restores my soul. Say, my soul belongs, my soul belongs. the book of Galatians after he had spoken concerning those who were consistently persecuting him because he was just revealing that the gospel is not only to the Jews that the Gentiles can also bear the gospel and he has suffered a lot from the hands of his brethren you see that was a trial that came because God approved Paul but even to men Paul closed by saying henceforth let no man bother me. He said, because I bear upon my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. So heaven sends you refreshing. When you identify that oh, there's only one place my help comes from. Men on earth lift their hands from troubling you. When you identify that your help comes from above. But this one is interesting to me principalities and powers and the demons of hell they retreat from troubling you the moment you make the declaration that there's only one who restores my soul and 
So when you say it now, say it with such confidence. Say, my soul belongs. to dominion in my soul because my soul belongs my soul belongs my soul he restores my soul let hell hear it that my soul belongs my soul belongs my soul belongs say my soul let the hell yeah it say my soul belongs my soul belongs my soul soul. now let my soul let my soul hear it let my soul hear it you belong Spirit. Pray in the spirit. We stir up the wells of refreshing from deep within you. Today, let the Lord minister to you by the rivers. The rivers that are within you. The rivers that are within you. I decree a restoration of joy. A restoration of peace. A restoration of sound mind. I decree restore. 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 Satan, you have been caught. We command a sevenfold restoration. You have been caught. We command a sevenfold restoration. Ratenda Kapalosa. Sande Barakona di Abananai, Rasso Patista, Rande Kabalaganga de Bananasa, Isande de Kaliamanata, Rada Bakadosa de Belia, Rasso Bandiata, one more time, Maso de la. Up your hands right now, sweet Holy Spirit. By the rivers that reside in your sons and your daughters, I command a compelling peace peace that passeth understanding. I decree right now that the waters are refreshing, even the refreshing. Oh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me from meek and lowly heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Every burden that has lingered by the anointing of the Spirit, I command right now, let those burdens be lifted. And it shall come to pass in that day that the yoke shall be taken from off your neck and the burden from your shoulder and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Today, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me and I command every burden be lifted now. We compel a season of refreshing. We compel a season of refreshing. We compel a season of refreshing. I open up upon us like flood waters. Whether you are in front or behind, I open up upon this congregation like flood waters. The rivers of refreshing. The rivers of refreshing. In the name of Jesus. And today we agree with God. We agree with God. Ooh, this is what I hear in my spirit. Unde kabalati sana shiata. 
they will run and not go weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Not only is the Lord refreshing you, He's bringing you into the power of His might so that you will go through subsequently and you will not know weariness. In the name of Jesus. We agree with God today. This is Zion, the city of the living God. This is Zion, the city of the living God. And upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And holiness. And the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. I decree this is Zion. Here there is deliverance. There is the restoration of holiness and wholeness. And here you gain back what is yours. Jesus said peace I live with you. My peace I give you. That means peace is yours. Everything that stole your peace. I judge it now. I bring it under a curse. In the name of Jesus. I compel not only restoration. I compel total recovery. Everything that you have been denied. In the season when you lived outside of peace. I decree that by the wild wind of God. Let them be restored unto you in folds. In the name of Jesus. Today father we agree. That everything that has been taken. Everything that is lost. This is the waters of refreshing. This, 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 these are the waters of refreshing. My heart, my soul, refresh now with your love, the dew of heaven fall, my dryness remove. My heart, my soul, refresh now with your love. The dew of heaven fall, my dryness removed. My heart, my soul, refresh now with your love. The dew of heaven fall, my dryness removed. Lord, we thank you because you have done it. To the praise and the glory of your great name. Come on, give the Lord praise. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. 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 You will return to your seat singing. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and will not faint. For the Lord will go before us. And his joy will be our strength. The mountain the wings as sea. As our spirit stands to soar, when we come we feel His presence, and we wait upon the Lord again, we will run and go. Come on, sing it. We will walk and will justice for the Lord will go before us, and His joy will be our strength. The mountain up the wings as He goes, as our spirit starts to soar. When we come into His presence and we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord in His presence, His fullness of joy, and in our strength will be restored.
cannot go weary. We will walk and will not faint. For the Lord will go before us, and His joy will be our strength. We're mounting up with wings as He goes, as our spirit starts to soar. When we come into His presence and we wait upon Him. We have come to the end of today's sermon. You can listen to more sermons from www.pastorchintok.com or listen to our teaching podcast from Google, Apple and Spotify podcast services using the channel The GLA Podcast. You can also follow live services on www.mixlr.com slash the GLAJ.